This is season four of Jumble Think. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Jumble Think, where we talk to dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers all about their journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, we're going to share some tips on how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality, too. On today's show, we are giving you a sneak peek of what you have to look forward to in season four of Jumble Think. Now, let's jump into today's show. Hey there, welcome to a very special episode of Jumble Think. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have something really cool lined up for you today. We're kicking off season four today, right now. And to do that, we are going to give you a taste, a, a trailer, a, a a sneak peek behind the scenes of what's been going on here at Jumble Think. I know many of you are l- listening, wondering why are you launching a new season in the middle of November? Don't you typically do this at the beginning of January or February every year? And the answer to that question is yes, we do typically do that. But we felt like after episode 285 that season three was finished and we're stepping into a new season of the show. Now, let me explain why that is. For a long time, we have kind of shifted our our DNA, our core, our our standard for what we do. We have been doing a lot of interviews with entrepreneurs and business people, and we love that. We love those people. You're going to continue hearing amazing startup founders and CEOs and executives on the show. But if you look back at season one of Jumble Think, if you look back at what we talk about, our heartbeat at Jumble Think is very simple. We want to talk to people with big ideas and dreams about how they made it a reality. We want to hear the stories behind those ideas. We want to hear the the passion and the pursuit and and the process to see those become a reality. Entrepreneurs and startup founders do that often, but there are a lot of other people who are chasing those dreams and ideas too. They could be an author. They could be an actor. They could be a maker. They could be a builder. They could be a thought leader whose idea isn't a product or service, that they're sharing something different, that they're communicating a different message. We wanted to get back to that story here at Jumble Think. And that's what we're doing in season four of the show. We've lined up some incredible guests. We are going after even bigger names, people that you're going to recognize. And we're so excited about what we're building. We already have Season four recorded and ready to go through the rest of this year. We have crazy cool episodes lined up for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I wanted to give you a little taste today of what's coming up. Before I give you that taste, I want to encourage you. Head on over to jumblethink.com. Sign up for the newsletter. uh, Go over and find those links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Let's connect up because I want you to be on the pulse of what's happening here at Jumblethink and beyond just understanding what we have lined up and what we're doing, I want to invite you into that story because the passion of Jumble Think, not only about telling the stories of dreamers and idea makers, is to help people who are in that process of saying, I do have big ideas and dreams, but I don't know what to do next, to have a roadmap for a future, to have the tools, the resources, the strategies to turn those dreams and ideas into reality. So, We're going to be doing some cool things to get this community really engaged in this process, to journey together, to encourage each other on that journey of chasing big ideas and dreams. Now, what we're sharing today is only a taste of what's to come. Along with this preview episode today, we are launching the first full interview episode with an incredible comedian, a thought leader, a person who is saying, how can we use comedy to help people? Her name's Jen Letterer. I'm going to give you a little clip of that conversation. And then I want to encourage you after you listen to the full episode today, this episode, this preview episode, to go ahead and jump on over to that conversation. Now, this conversation was recorded at Propelify Innovation Festival in New Jersey. Let's go ahead and jump in and give you a little taste of what's to come. You actually had a job in Times Square selling tickets to comedy shows. Yes. I've met those people. Be nice as I walk to them. Through, Be nice to them, <laughs> <just> Michael. Like, 
I'm like, I don't want a ticket. I already know where don't. I'm going. Of course but, you don't, Michael. But <laughs> but I'm not here to be a tourist either. That's so, right. Yeah. That's right. There were plenty of people that did want to go to comedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and boy, did that job teach me sales. Yeah. And not being afraid to hear no, yeah. not being afraid to go after what it is I wanted, which wow. was money at the yeah. time. It was yeah. not comedy. I didn't. I wasn't interested in comedy at yeah. that time. I just was interested in paying the bills. It's a good thing to worry about. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've heard they're important. Yeah. So I tried At least to some people think. fulfill that. Yeah. It was on that job that I met a, a person who was a New Yorker and not interested in comedy whatsoever, but I yeah. got him to stop. Yeah. And I got him to listen to me. Yeah. And he said, who are you and why yeah. are you doing this job? Yeah. And he had a friend who ran a talent management company and needed help. Wow. And he said, would you be interested in talking? I said, I am on the street selling <laughs> comedy tickets. I am interested in whatever yeah. opportunity you have. Yeah. Um, and within two weeks, I was working for that management company. And within a year and a half, I was running it. Wow. I took it over and made it my own for five years. Yeah. And that's where I cut my business teeth. That's where I understood the business of show. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of uh, the thing that a lot of people miss. They yes. see the glamour. They're like, "Oh, Hollywood's so sexy and appealing and beautiful," or like television or, or you know cinema or Broadway. It's just all, but it's it's a business, and people don't realize that you have to run it as a business. It is your business. It 100 percent is, and talent is almost the last factor mm -hmm. that goes into the decisions being made by the decision makers, yeah. which is again another reason why you have to be solid. Yeah. You cannot be looking for validation because you're not getting the job or not getting the job because of talent. There's a million other pieces to look at. Yeah. You know, and and you can see that on TV as well. It's not yeah. the most talented people always. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. and talent does not equal success. There's a lot more to that conversation with Jen Letterer, and it's available today, so you can go check out that episode. One of the other interviews we've been looking forward to for months was with a guy that all of us know, many of us grew up watching, whether it was on Star Trek or Reading Rainbow or countless other things that he's done and worked on. His name's LeVar Burton. I sat down with him in Hollywood to talk about his journey, about the, the art of storytelling, and so much more. Here's a short clip from that conversation. I see myself as a storyteller. And whether I'm acting or directing, producing, writing, uh, podcasting, I, I'm an itinerant storyteller. I just yeah. I go from place to place. I make speeches. Um, I read aloud. <laughs> um, I, I, I tell stories for a living. Um, and I'm really lucky and consider myself so fortunate to be able to actually support myself and my family by being a storyteller. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty cool job. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so, um, yeah, I, I kind of hit the jackpot in this lifetime. How did you craft that skill? There are a lot of people who, just like comics, they think they're funny. Right. Or they think they're good at telling a story, right. but they get into uh, that party that they go to. Yeah. And people come up to them and they feel trapped because they're like, oh, this story. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it all began for me with reading. Yeah. You know? My journey as a storyteller definitely began with reading and, and the love for the written word that, that uh, was inculcated into me by my mother, Irma mm. Jean. Um, my mom was an avid reader. Yeah. Uh, where did, you know, I've never heard you talk about where her passion for learning came from. She was the first person in her family to graduate from college. So she was, a, and she, she graduated, her first degree, like I said, was in English language literature. So just not an easy thing. <laughs> so my mom was a reader. Yeah. You know, um, she loved books. Yeah. Uh, she loved to read. Um, so I definitely, uh, I, I not only inherited, you know, that through her DNA, um, both physical and spiritual, but I also had the, that primary example growing up that, you know, reading was what we did. Yeah. You know, we took two newspapers. Uh, she always had books going for her, you know, for, for pleasure. Uh, she read a lot while she was going for her MMSW. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just, you know, 
reading was there was there were there was no question that we read more than we watched TV. Yeah. In in the house that I grew up in. Yeah. Uh, television was was relegated to more a weekend mm. uh, and 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 really leisurely thing. Yeah. You know, um, most of the time it was about reading. Yeah. Um, or doing chores. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much more to this conversation with LeVar, and it's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. We're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we're going to give you a couple more sneak peeks into season four of Jumble Think. <laughs> We want to thank our friends over at Penji for being a partner with JumbleThink. They're doing cool stuff. They are your source for unlimited graphic design at a low monthly subscription rate. Whether you're a small business, a big corporation, a startup, or even a marketing team, they can help you achieve more with getting the design you want from logos to flyers to web design to even that social media image that you need. They can help you and they do killer work. Best of all, as a listener of Jumble Think, they're going to give you 15% off your first month. All you have to do is head on over to penji.co, that's P-E-N-J-I dot C-O, and use the code Jumble to get 15% off your first month. Now let's continue taking a look at what's in store for season four of Jumble Think. While we're giving you a taste today of what you have to look forward to in season four, we're not giving away everything. We have some surprises in store for the weeks and months ahead with some of the guests that we have on and some really cool new things we are doing. One of the interviews we recently had was with a new author. He wrote a book on the the power of disagreement. It's a super cool conversation. We talk about disagreement. We talk about technology. We talk about bias. A lot of cool stuff in there. Here's a little clip from that conversation with Buster Benson. When when we have more of a problem of too much information, we have to lean on these even heavier. Um, and we actually build up infrastructure to help us filter. Like all of the things that we use to filter information for us, like which, which people we follow on Twitter, you know, what, what the algorithms of Facebook sort of deem to you know be in front of us, what channels on TV we watch, which pa- papers we watch or listen to and read, um, what books we read. All these things are have already done a lot of the filtering for us. And so if our only goal is to reinforce our beliefs, we're really now carving off a really sort of isolated slice of the total picture. And we end up having a a view that isn't fully informed. And, you know, when we're all trying to talk to each other and none of us is fully informed or even like partially informed about the other side, um, it leads to all kinds of communication problems. (laughs) Like, you know, what is the thing I can do with my time and attention that will, you know, have the greatest positive impact on sort of the current world situation, you know, you know, coming out of, you know, this sort of like realization that the world is very polarized right now and a lot of things are unproductive. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard question to answer. You know, we can, we can, you know, start, uh, I can run for office, you know, I can start canvassing, I can start being activists, I can do all those other things. Um, but I was really trying to find the thing that would be the biggest um, sort of, um, I guess, bang for the buck in terms of what's not being, sourced like what what's not being worked on that I can work on that's like I'm uniquely suited for and so my purpose is really just to improve the quality of the conversation of the world because I think that until we can have a conversation about disagreement things we disagree about like like we can't solve any of the problems we're not going to actually start working on the problems until we can talk about them and um you know I sort of see it as an existential threat that you know if we don't solve this you know we're not gonna we're gonna we're not gonna be able to you know, we might die of the of the silliest thing because we just can't talk about it. There's a lot more to that conversation with Buster Benson. You're not going to want to miss any of that. What other kind of fun things do we have in store? Well, at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we're going to be releasing some very special holiday episodes. For me, I love the holiday season. Pretty much anything from the time fall starts, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, the whole way up through that first week of January. It's my favorite time of the year. And so I wanted to do something a little special this year for those episodes. You're just going to have to wait and see what it is, but we've got some special, special surprises for you in store. Well, that's going to do it for your little preview of season four and all that's in store of it. We already have 15 episodes planned out for the next couple of weeks as we go into 2020. 
Before we wrap up, I want to remind you of something so important. It's more important than any interview that we could have. It's more important than any topic we could talk about. And that's you. You matter. I believe you were created for something awesome, that the dreams and ideas inside of you are significant, that you have purpose and you matter. That's why we do this show. While it's cool to get to interview amazing people, while it's cool to have people listening to the show, that's not why we do it. We do it because we believe in you. So I want to encourage you. I want you to think about the, the things inside of you, the dreams, the ideas that you've, you've had, the things that you can't shake off, that continue to nag you. These are probably the areas that you need to step into. They probably scare you. They probably seem overwhelming. But I believe, and here at Jumble Think, we believe that you were created for something awesome. So that's your challenge today, to, to continue to dream big, but beyond just dreaming, beyond just thinking, it's time to start stepping into the purpose you were created to live. Now, I hope you will join us through all of season four to join these conversations, but to be challenged to go deeper. Head on over to jumblethink.com. Let's connect Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And then also make sure you sign up for that newsletter. Let's begin season four by coming together, by stepping into the unknown, by saying collectively we can change the world, that our voice, our passions, our ideas, our dreams matter, and that they will impact this world. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking time to be a part of what we're doing here at Jumbo Think. Now it's your turn. Dream big and change the world around you. Sur les côtés, vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.